All right, welcome back everybody to another Bible study. May the Most High bless you. I pray all is well with everybody as we give the Most High all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. My title now says, From Sinner to Being Delivered to Being Saved. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I want to go on with this title once again, From Sinner to Being Delivered to Being Saved. A lot of people think that when they say the word, oh, I've been saved for 40, 50 years now, I've been in the church all my life, that they have already made it into heaven. But there is a difference when you talk about being delivered versus being saved. Because I've been delivered from all kind of my sins. But I haven't made it in the kingdom yet. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about and where I'm going with this video. And I want to talk about a person that called himself the worst of sinners. Which is Apostle Paul. So Paul, when he was Saul at the time, thought what he was doing was right out of ignorance. He went from sinner to being delivered, to being saved. Paul made a statement that I, I got to concentrate on what's in front of me and forget about what's behind me. I got to press toward the mark, toward the prize of the higher calling. So when I think about Apostle Paul and then I look back in the mirror at myself, my life, I was also worse. I was a sinner. We so quick to point fingers at everybody else, but when it comes to really looking at ourselves in the mirror, Brother Marvell, like we talked about the other day, we really don't want to accept the fact that how bad we was and really admit that how much work we still need on ourselves right now. And then no matter how, how long you talking about, you have been saved. Because there's a lot of folk walking around talking about they saved, but they still live in the lifestyle of a true sinner. They willfully sinning. They lifestyle don't match nothing Christ-like. So I'm not going to be pretty in this video, and I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear, but I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, and let the church say amen, and I love you. And if you don't want to hear truth, you might as well cut this video off right now. A lot of us got drunk. A lot of us got high. A lot of us men, we, we done hold around so many times, but we quick to call a woman a hoe. We done hold around, slept around, and did all kind of wickedness. A lot of women done slept around. A lot of us done committed abortions and, and, and done dealt with all kind of lying and stealing and cheating and selling dope and fighting. Have I hit one of your sins yet? A lot of us done been in the jail cells and can't even remember how many times we done been in there. We done acted a fool through the church and still going to church, using the church as a cover up to act like we something that we not. Homosexuality has taken over. Jealousy, killing, pedophiles, raping, cocaine, all the drugs, living that lifestyle. Have I hit one of yours yet? Let me stop. Now I hope I've got somebody's attention because the Most High said, spread the gospel, speak, and don't, don't let up on it. So now that I got your attention, my title once again says, From Sinner to Being Delivered to Being Saved. How many people have been delivered from smoking, delivered from drinking, but you're still fighting with looking at pornography? You're still fighting with something else? You still figured out that long as you're in flesh, you still got a problem. You've been delivered from, from, from homosexuality, but now you got a problem lying and stealing. You've been delivered from shooting that poison in your arm, but now you find yourself still gossiping and hanging around the wrong crowd. Let me stop because somebody just got mad and, 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 and cut this video off. Don't cut it off. Listen for a moment because what I'm about to say in this may change somebody's life. Because when you talk about being delivered, when you talk about being saved, when you talk about being set apart, 
That's what sanctions. So let's talk about sanctification. Being set apart, a lot of people claim to be set apart, but they just have fell apart. They have not been set apart. And when you don't have the Holy Spirit, you walking around with some type of spirit. So y'all, if you have your Bibles, we go on to 1 Timothy. We're going to look at verses 12 through 20. Since I've talked so much about false prophets and false teaching, that's why I want to fast forward down. I was going to do the whole chapter, but I, I just did um, something similar to that the other day. So I want to move past the false teaching part of the scriptures, and let's move down to where the Bible talks about being faithful and grace and mercy stepped in when none of us was worthy. Grace and mercy is what we have and some of us still don't want to act right. Apostle Paul taught his young helper Timothy the way. Showed him what to do and what not to do. I like to call Timothy Paul's young protege. Because Paul took him under his wings and guided him. He was like a son to Paul in the ministry and he taught well. So if you have your Bibles, now we're going to deal with these scriptures. Thank you for listening to my introduction. I wanted to get your attention. And it says here in verse, let me see, what did I say? 12 through 20? Okay. Let's look at verse 12. It says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who had enabled me for that he counted me faithful, put me into the ministry. And I'm going to take my time with this. This, this. this scripture right here, Paul said, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, he enabled me. He counted me faithful as worse as I was. As bad as I was, he put me in the ministry. I was the same one who threw his people in prison. I was the same one who killed many. But I thought what I was doing was right, but he counted me faithful. What am I getting at with this one scripture right here is that it don't matter how bad you was. It don't matter what you had done. When you look at Paul, look at how bad this man was. So you could have been the worst gangster, the most craziest thug you could be, the biggest hoe in the neighborhood. But when he cleans you up, he takes your misery and turn it into ministry. Let the church say amen. Paul said he counted me faithful and I'm sitting there in this video saying y'all out of all the drunkenness sleeping around lying and stealing and doing folk bad that I've done in my life he counted me faithful and he put me in the ministry when I didn't care nothing about the ministry one point of time in my life I didn't care nothing about the most high I even told the most high you better find somebody else to put in the ministry because I ain't the one but I ran as long as I could run brother K. Ray and y'all wonder why I'm on here in the morning, at night, during the day, caring about my brothers and sisters. See, I can preach a whole sermon just off this verse 12, but let, let me move on to 13. Paul says in 13, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. See, Paul was taught by Guy Mill, which was supposed to have been this, this man who was very smart and knew, the, knew so much. But, see, you can be brought up and be taught wrong. And what you be taught wrong, when you get taught tradition and, and religion, then you're not being taught the true word. I hope I just said something. Because, see, it's a difference in ignorance and stupidity. Paul just said he did it ignorantly in unbelief. See, ignorant means just simply not knowing. But when you do something and continue, when you know better, and you then you start doing it anyway when you know it's wrong, now you're just being plain stupid. See, all of us have been ignorant in our life. Some of us are still ignorant. Ignorance, this can be changed. 
Because when you don't know, you don't know. Just like I was brought up in all this Halloween and, and these these hella days and all this stuff that I thought was, was so amazing and had something to do with being in the heaven. Getting in the heaven, I was ignorant, K-Ray, and didn't know, didn't have a clue on what I was off in. Knowing, not knowing that most of the stuff I was in growing up was demonic. I'll let the church say amen. So I did it ignorantly. Now that I know better, I don't play a part of none of that. Paul actually thought what he was doing was right. He did. Verse 14. But before I go to verse 14, let me say this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Just because something has been done for so long don't mean that it was done right. Most of us follow what grandma did, what big mama did. Half of them couldn't even read. But we followed along because of what somebody else did. We put mama, daddy, and grandpa and other folk over the most high, and that's a no-no. As they used to tell us growing up, that's a no-no. We put people over the most high. It's to the point now where people care more about what such and such said versus what the words say. Look at verse 14 now. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in who? Christ Jesus. Our Savior. Yahshua. The anointed one. Grace. Our love. If it wasn't for grace and mercy, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. You wouldn't be sitting here looking at me right now. I wouldn't be trying to straighten up my life. I would continue to live the same way I used to live when I was shacking up and getting drunk and doing what I love best. I was one messed up dude. But now, I see the light. You was one messed up man. You was one messed up woman. But now, if you know better, if you study and you found out now that worship didn't have nothing to do about how many days you went to church. Because as our beautiful sister B. Jackson says, your worship is your lifestyle. How are you living? What you doing? How are you doing it? Who are you living for? As Brother P.P. P. Drawing say, it is too, it, well, which world are you living for? Hmm. I thank the most high for y'all. I love y'all comments and y'all teachings. I get a lot out of y'all. Thank y'all and keep being obedient. All of y'all. Verse 15 Paul say this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Woo, that's where I got my title from right there. Paul already said in verse 13, he was a blasphemer. He was a prosecutor. He was injurious. He did a lot of wrong. And then he come here in 15 and says, who I'm chief. I was the worst. Woo, let the church say amen. Some of us act like we done forgot that our Savior came into the world to save sinners. Some of us want to be the only ones that get saved. We don't care about the dope dealer. We don't care about the prostitute. We don't care about the homosexual, the lesbian. We don't care about that drunk man, that homeless man on the corner. As long as I get in, well, you got the wrong. You got it all made wrong. You got it mixed up. As V and Raymond say, you know what your problem is, baby boy. You got it all twisted. And when we get stuck on just ourselves, how do you think the Most High really look at it? Look at us. He said, I sent my son not to condemn the world, but through him the world could be saved. But we see how many people are actually talking about really being saved because look at their lifestyle. Let me go back to the title. From sinner to being delivered to being saved. See, Paul recognized that he was a sinner. And that he was the worst of the sinners. And then he saw how the, the, the Most High delivered him. And then he recognized that now I can be saved. Now y'all wonder why I use deliverance then being saved. Because the Bible say those that what? Endure to the end 
shall, as Pastor Cochran would say, shall be saved. Shall be saved. That scripture is so overlooked because we already think we done made it and we ain't made it. <laughs> Let me get all the way real with you. All the ones that done passed before us, they ain't even made it in yet. Oh, somebody don't understand that. Somebody is still waiting in that holding tank. Somebody's still waiting on the kingdom. I'm still waiting on the kingdom. Somebody's still waiting in paradise. Paradise is not heaven. Uh, I done messed up. Uh, why, why would you say something like that, JT? Because I want to teach you the truth. I'm seeing three to four funerals a week now. The pastor getting in the pulpit saying, oh, that brother, he's sitting in heaven now. Oh, quit lying, preacher. That man ain't sitting with God. That man murdered many people. That man lived a wicked lifestyle. Stop putting everybody with the Father when it's somebody sitting in hell. Oh, uh, we don't want to read Luke 16. Some of us keep lying about this walk. Living a fake lifestyle. And every time there's a funeral, somebody getting put in heaven. Sitting beside God on the throne. No. <laughs> the dead in Christ will rise first. See, when I talk about hell, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you what the truth is when I talk about hell versus the lake of fire, which is the second death. Hell is just simply the grave. Sheol. Hades. That holding tank, but you don't want to be on the wrong side. Oh, come on. When people tell me go to hell, JT, I said, I'm, I am I will. I will go to my grave, but I'm not going to stay in hell. I'm going to be in the kingdom. See, I got to go by, I got to stop by my grave, and then I'll make it to the other side, which is this side. I ain't talking about flying in the sky like a lot of people teach them, because the Bible teaches me in Revelation, the old heaven is done with. We're going to be right on earth. The meek shall inherit the earth. I ain't got no business talking about flying away. You can say I ain't got to fly away all you want. And, and I don't know where you're going. You might miss the real heaven. Let me leave that alone. That's a whole nother video. But when you look at what Paul is saying here. Paul shows with his life. Paul talked about himself look like more than anybody. He talked about the flesh so much, how it was no good in him, and that every time that he tried to do good, evil was always present. Paul was fighting with those demonic spirits. As like I talked the other day, the messenger of Satan was sent to buffer Paul, to strike him, to beat him, to break him down. But Paul kept on pressing no matter what. They stoned him and left him for dead. He got right on up and started back preaching. Mm. Woo, it's hot up in here. But he recognized that grace and mercy. See, you don't never forget who you was and what you have done. Even though you might try to walk around like you ain't never done nothing wrong, like you all saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost and water baptized. I got Jesus on my mind. I found a new life. Well, I got a news flash for you. You ain't never been that good. And I haven't either. See, if we just tell the truth, none of us, the Bible say, none of us, none of us was that good. Look at verse 16. Paul says, How bad for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. I love verse 16 because all Paul is simply saying right here is since I was the worst, I was worse than a whole lot of people. But the most high, once again, not only did he straighten me up, he had mercy on me and he let me lead by an example. Because I, I, I was the worst So now he uses me as an example Because everybody saw when Paul was coming You better run 
Here come the persecution. Here come the one that's going to throw you in, in prison. See, the same thing that Paul did came back on him. He was put in a prison. He was beat up and left for dead. But God took that worst one and used him for an example. Now look at him. And you wonder why a lot of people didn't want to follow Paul. You wonder why he people were wondering, where did you get your gospel from? Who taught you? Who gave you the permission to... Paul said, I was chosen by the Most High. What I've learned didn't come from man. Paul, as a matter of fact, had to go against what he was taught growing up. Same one taught him he had to go against that. Because he wasn't taught all the way the truth. What he did in ignorance. So now the Most High uses this man, changes his name. And when your name changed, your actions change. Paul was zealous. Paul had kept that same fight. Instead of going against the people, he went for them. Stood up for them. Woo, don't tell me God won't use that big time gangster. That gangster will get off into the ministry and be an ex-gangster and do more damage in the ministry than the ones that's been so-called trying to preach all their life. That's why the most high take the worst and make the best. What's that song Marvin Sapp did? He saw the best in me when everyone else around me could only see the worst in me. Whatever, who you are and whatever color you are, I don't care what color you are looking at this video. Y'all just got to get with me. I'm on fire, I can't read. I can't stop because I'm on fire. And I think about me, I think about you, I think about all of us and how, how we used to be. No, we shouldn't, we shouldn't even get a chance at being in the heaven. Think about all the abortions that have been committed. All the times you done got high and drunk, you should have ran off the road. You should have been the one on the 6 o'clock news that killed that family. I should have been, oh Lord help me, God almighty. I should have been the one that ran off the road. I drove home drunk more than once. Why is it that he let me live? Versus I had to go bury some of my homeboys. God almighty. Got to go to another funeral the same guy. When I did the same thing he done, did the thing, same thing she done, I could have got AIDS. You could have got AIDS. We so quick to talk about the ones where they, they shouldn't have been horned around. But how many times have we hold around? No, y'all better come on. Talk back to me if you can, as Pastor Anderson would say. Talk back to me if you can. Yeah. Because this grace and mercy, we shouldn't take it lightly. You know what? It's going to run out one of these days, y'all. Paul said, for this cause, I obtain mercy. And you wonder why he would say things like in Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. We quote these scriptures, but ain't trying to live them. It don't matter how bad you think you was and what you done. Here's the big key also. Learn how to forgive yourself. You know why most people can't move on? Because they won't even forgive themselves. We do not take this lightly, y'all. Let's move on to verse 17. Now unto the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen, Paul says. He says pretty much, I pray that honor and that glory will always be given to the only true most high. That's the one who lives forever. You got Buddha, you got all these other so-called gods out there. But Paul say the truth is in the most high. That's the one who straightened me up. I can't no longer go back to that man I was when I was Saul. But now that I got a new name, a new start. Because the Bible also say any man made in Christ is a new creature in those old things. Why in the hell would you go back to doing your old things? Mmm. People don't like when I use the word hell. Let me move on. Now, let's look at verse 18. It says, This charge I commanded to thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by the mightest war a good warfare. Paul, once again, looked at, looked at Timothy like a, a young son in the ministry. Timothy was a, a young man raised by grandmother and mother. They did well. That also show you just because 
man wasn't in the house, father wasn't in the house, and boy, I still could come out all right. There's so much to learn in these scriptures. Timothy, my son, I'm charging you. I'm giving you these instructions based on what I have taught you and what the prophets have also said. He tells Timothy, if you follow these instructions, you're going to do well. You're going to fight like a true warrior like I am. I'm charging you. That means a lot when somebody charges you. You are held accountable. You are held in high standard. You got to do what's right. The Most High is charging every pastor, every minister, every evangelist, whoever you are in this, you are being charged with a charge. And it's a beautiful thing when you got people on your side that don't mind fighting with you instead of fighting against you. I got some soldiers on here. But it's more cowards than soldiers nowadays. It's a lot of pretenders. It's a lot of wannabes. It's a lot of I want to act like I'm Christ-like. I want to be in the ministry for a minute, then I want to jump back out and start hoeing around. I want to jump back out and do what I want to do and hang with this brother here or hang with this sister here. Y'all see how the Lord changed up this video. I, I'm just going to be obedient. Look at verse 19. He says, Holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concern and faith, have made shipwreck. God made it. This scripture is so powerful to me. You will be faithful and have a clear conscience pretty much. But how can you be faithful? How can you hold the faith? How can you do good when you're still living in sin? Paul is saying there is a lot of people that made a mess of their faith because they didn't listen to their conscience. In other words, you should be listening to the Holy Spirit. But how can you listen to something that you don't have? A lot of people say they got faith until trouble hit their lives. Man, I got faith. I got faith, man. I, then the next time you talk to him, man, I don't know, man. I'm just, I give up. I can't, man. I don't believe like I should. I don't wanna. I don't wanna pray. I don't feel like fasting. I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like where your faith at when your when your times hit hard. Woo! Verse twenty says, "Of whom is Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto God, no, -uh. whom I have delivered unto Satan." That they may not learn, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Paul talks about these two, Hymenius and Alexander. He said, I've given these men over to the power of Satan, so they will learn not to oppose the Most High. When somebody is given over, <laughs> I'm trying to wrap up now. I'm going to wrap this video up. I was trying to make it right at 30 minutes, so we're doing good. And I'm, at the same time, I'm not trying to put a time limit on the most high in this video because what needs to be said needs to be said. But when you are given over, just like those in the Bible was given over to a reprobated mind, that's a terrible state of mind to be. It's over with. Because when you are given over to a reprobated mind, there is nothing the most high can do for you no more because you have rejected him. And the Bible teaches us when you reject the most high, he will reject you because he have already done all in this power for people not to perish. But look at what we do. We reject the most high. Let us learn from yesterday. Live for the day as we hope and pray for tomorrow. This is my Bible study. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and most of all, most of all, most of all the doers of his holy word. What good is reading, studying, if you're not going to be a doer? Y'all take care. Love you.